Coach, 23-3. Who won the game? Uh, UConn. UConn won? Yeah. So it was UConn, Purdue in the final? Yeah. And you got South Carolina versus uh, Iowa in the other final? Yeah. I tell you what, man. I'm not just saying this because I am a girl dad, but it's been so much fun watching the, this women's tournament. Think about that, man. Like some of the talent. I mean, everybody talks about Caitlin Clark, rightfully so, but Paige, Dawn Staley's team is just, I think they're a brand new starting five and they're undefeated. Juju Watkins, oh my goodness. I mean, the, the women's game is alive and well and uh, have had a lot of, uh, taken a lot of enjoyment. And the fact that like the entire locker room is talking about, was that a foul, was that not a foul? I love that. Like the viewership, uh, it's, that, that's really, that's really, really great for those girls. They deserve all of that. I don't know who's going to win. South Carolina's loaded, but you know, you never put anything past Caitlin Clark and her teammates. Let's talk about tonight's game. <laughs> Let's talk about this one. Yeah, it was a good win. Obviously, uh, 23, May 3 is, I believe, a season high. And uh, 38 assists. You know, those, those two numbers go hand in hand. Uh, that was fun to watch. Uh, plus nine in the glass. Uh, and our bench, you know, can't say enough good things about our bench tonight. 58 bench points. And from beginning to end, uh, you know, the, even the guys that closed, those guys were playing at a high level. So, uh, and Nicola, oh yeah, I guess another triple double, but a good win for us. Four games to go, and um, now we got to go on the road and try to get one in, in Utah. Casey, he's over fifty percent from three now in the last eleven or twelve games. What's working for him, and what's sort of getting him into the rhythms that he's been? In? Well, I, I think it speaks to one him him being a great shooter, staying ready, putting the time in, uh, but also you look at the quality of looks. I mean, that, that's what I think is most important is. And when we struggled a few games since the All-Star break and making shots, it wasn't like we, we were getting bad looks. We just were not making open and wide open looks. And I think he's getting tremendous uh, looks from his teammates. And he's just stepping in, shooting with great confidence. He's one of the best shooters in the league. Um, and again, when you have 38 assists on 53 made field goals, uh, the ball is flying and guys are really trying to get their teammates the best shot possible. How sick was Reggie for him to wear a mask on the sideline? And then he bounces back with 18, 5 and 3. And down the well, I, I have to give him a lot of credit, man, um, because I didn't think he was going to play. And uh, I, I made sure I did not give him any daps the whole night. I gave him my elbow the whole night. I'm trying to stay healthy here, Matt. Um, but I didn't think he was going to play. For him to go out there and get 18, 5 and 3 and shoot the way he did in 24 minutes um, is just amazing and, and a testament to his. T a testament to his toughness. And that allows us, I, I think obviously Aaron didn't play, but having Jamal start, gets Reggie back with that second unit, more of a natural order to things for us. And it was great to have Jamal Murray back. Um, and I was really thankful I didn't have to put him back in. He's on a minute restriction. And I just told our, uh, Steve Short, I said, listen, man, you can't give me any crap tonight. I kept him well below his minute restriction. So, uh, but it's really good to have Jamal Murray and Zeke Naji back after having both missed, you know, an extended period of time. How did you feel like Jamal looked physically out there? And, and do you think you'll keep him on that restriction probably for the rest of the regular season or, or ramp it up? Yeah, I, I think probably, you know, in, in the, the, the same ballpark as we had tonight. Um, obviously, he didn't, he didn't come close to reaching that uh, the minute restriction, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. We want to be smart. We want him back. We want him getting a rhythm because it's not like it used to be the season ended on a Wednesday night and you were playing on Saturday. The way it is now, you, you finished, you got a week off. And so that's why I think it's really important for Jamal to play and find a rhythm. I thought he was pretty good offensively and I, I think defensively in that third quarter, uh, Jamal and everyone else out there, you know, that was by far our worst defensive quarter. Um, you know, but then in the fourth quarter, once again, we, we were able to uh, lock up and, and get stops and get out and run. Five blocks for Peyton Watson, six assists for Justin Holiday. Just what do those guys bring off the bench for you tonight? Yeah, Peyton was a defensive player of the game. You know, five blocks, six rebounds, um, and just some terrific effort plays, you know, all over the place. And, uh, and Justin Holiday, once again, birthday boy. And so he goes out there, three or three from the field, knocks down two threes, six assists. So I, I felt the whole night. I just loved, even Julian, I, I just loved how our bench was playing. 
they played with real good energy and they were attacking and the ball was moving and the pace in which they were playing with. They, they were a fun group to watch all night long. So, uh, yeah, but Peyton and Justin, to your question, Ryan, I thought those guys were outstanding. <clears throat> All right. All right, listen, it's a wrap. Get Jamal and Peyton in here. Was it a foul? You know, I asked Ryan Bone and Andrew Munson, who are both diehard Iowa fans, and they said, of course it was. I think the general consensus was, may have been a foul, but you don't call that in that situation. You always want the players to kind of decide what it is. But if it was my fault to ask in Iowa, it was a stupid question. Everybody here to join the SWAT team, man. <laughs> We got shirts. You guys see it's a real thing after tonight. It's not made up. It's a dope shirt, right? Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, man. Five blocks tonight. Defensive player of the game, Shane. Just what was working for you out there on the defensive side? Um, I think just playing with a lot of energy, um, playing with multiple efforts. Um, obviously, in the NBA, it's very tough to even block one shot. So I'm glad I was able to be in position to get my hands on multiple tonight. So yeah, just a great defensive night. Um, only allowed them to score 110 points. We scored 142. So just really a great night overall around. Do you have a, a favorite block this season? Or are there ones that stick in your head a little bit more than others? I don't know. I, I kind of like the one where I jumped over Joker versus Celtics. That's kind of my the most memorable one thus far, for sure. Dejounte Murray entered uh, tonight's game as one of the best isolation players in the league. I think you had one, maybe two blocks on him. How much do you enjoy that you get those type of assignments in your second but really first season? Well, just like you said, I enjoy it. Um, it's something that I take on head first, the challenge. And he's another great player, so I always think of it as a way that I could get better. This guy's going to challenge me, I'm going to challenge him, and I'm just going to go out there and battle. And I think that's what happened tonight. Um, iron sharpens iron, and I definitely feel like I got more comfortable, more confident, and better. You guys made 23 threes tonight. That's the most of the season for the team. Just the ball was really moving well out there. You, you guys felt like you generated good shots. What made it? different from other games? Was there anything in particular that made it different? Uh, obviously, um, it was great having Jamal back, um, great having Zeke back. You know, having our team at full strength is going to be big for us. Even though we were missing AG, um, we're glad that he got some much needed rest. Um, he's been a dog for us all season. So when there's a chance for him to, you know, get some rest or if his body's not feeling 100%, we tell him there's no need to force it because he does so much and sacrifices for the team. So I think just having everybody out there healthy and like you said, the ball was moving around, it was flowing, and guys were hitting shots, so. What kind of boost does it give guys, even like morale-wise, when you have Jamal back? I think it's 41-14 is the record with him in the lineup now. This season. What, what, how, how does it kind of impact everyone intangibly even? Uh, it impacts everyone a lot. Um, J Jamal is one of our vocal leaders on this team. You know, um, Nicola kind of leads more by example. But Jamal is one of those people who's a voice for us in the locker room and just going out there. I think he keeps everybody poised because he's always so under control and always so comfortable. So I think that there's a different uh, sense of comfort when he's out there just knowing exactly what he's going to bring to the table every night. So I think he definitely um, boosted the morale. But I mean, he's been an amazing morale booster even when he's been out. Um, lost a few tough ones, but he's been there supporting us every time. And I mean, he's, he's one of the best teammates you could ask for. If you do win the next four games, you will win the Western Conference. You guys do control that. How much does that matter? Uh, it matters to us more than anything. You know, we want to go out and try to win every game. Um, and I think that the motto for us just right now is one game at a time. Uh, we can't get comfortable with where we're at. Um, we also can't take our foot off the gas and be like, playoffs are coming up and try to turn it back on. I think it's time now more than ever to lock in and really focus and get a good role going into the playoffs. So I think everybody's locked in on that. And we know what's at stake. So everybody's taking it seriously. And we're going out to win games. What was the, uh, the head dance today? <laughs> <laughs> what was the story? Uh, I, was, I mean, I was rocking a headband earlier in the season. But honestly, if you want me to keep it real, I didn't like how what it was doing to my braids. So I chilled. But 
I just realized that there's two different types of headbands today. There's a cotton one and there's a dry fit. So I tried something new today with the headband. But the lineup of guys we had in, I think all five had a headband. Was that right? Yeah. yeah so all, all I mean, white. yeah, we called it headband highlights tonight, man. <laughs> it was a good group of guys. Went in there, played hard. Not to drop a sweat on our faces, man. So. So, so wait, that was just a coincidence? That was a coincidence because I, I don't think everybody knew who was going to play tonight, you know what I'm saying? Because our rotation kind of changes a lot, especially with guys out. So it was just by chance, but it was funny that that ended up happening. <laughs> which cotton were you wearing? Was it? I was wearing that cotton one, I think. I don't know which one it is. So you didn't like the... You didn't like the track it was track. messing up my braids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Pete, there's a, one of the huddles there that TJ was kind of getting on. He, he said, if you got five now, there's no reason you shouldn't have ten tonight. And you went out pretty quickly and put up six points. How, how, how does that third leadership help you? Uh, it keeps me real locked in, and um, at the same time, he challenges me, and that's what I want. That's how I get myself into the game: is finding things to be mad about, or finding things that I can carry with me into the game to keep that chip on my shoulder. And DJ always does a good job of that. He fires me up, and I know it's always coming from a good place. He's never coming from a place of negativity or trying to be malicious with any of his comments. So I think that it's great having him as a veteran presence, like you said. And that's my guy forever. You know, said a few guys were uh, arguing over the, the foul call at the end of the Iowa UConn game yesterday. Did you did you see it and have an opinion on it in that in that debate? <laughs> I didn't even really watch the game, but I did see the call. But I, I think uh, Paige said it best. Um, no one call determines the game, and obviously, there's things that both teams can always do better. So. Big shout out to those girls doing it on that side. I mean, they're bringing so much attention and light to the game. It's huge. So, big shout out to them. But yeah, it was a tough call. Tough call. You had a play in the fourth quarter where you came up the screen from, uh, I think it was Zeke, and you dribbled, pump fake, hit the mid range shot. Um, where is your comfortability on the ball from the beginning of the season to now? Uh, it's, it's up a lot, honestly. Um, I'm a lot more comfortable with the ball in my hands. And I think that my teammates are comfortable in the balls in my hands as well. You don't see guys running towards me or yelling for the ball. They kind of just space out and let me do my thing, whether that's catching a rebound and pushing in transition or if it's just me with the ball in the half court. So I'm super comfortable with it. Um, that mid-range shot is one of my shots. Um, I've been shooting forever. So I'm comfortable with that. And I mean, if when I came out, if I had a clean look, I'm shooting that. Who are you watching or have been watching uh, to, I guess, while you're like, you know, adding things to your on ball game? Uh, definitely uh, watching guys, especially in the mid-range, like Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. I think just their footwork and their shot preparation on every shot is so great, uh, especially being able to see them last year in the playoffs during that um, game three and four in Phoenix. It was special to watch. Um, so I try to take little tips and tricks here and there um, from them, but really just watching the game, watching Nicola, watching Jamal. I mean, I have some of the best examples right in front of me, so I just try to soak up as much as I can and be a sponge. If you guys had a dunk contest as a team, how would Jay Huff do? I think Jay Huff would do pretty good. He all, he always does something in warm-ups where you're like, I didn't know you had that, Jay. So. He had like a 360 window earlier today. Yeah, he could do that. At 7-1, that's super impressive to me. So to have that kind of um, control in the air, um, he's definitely a special talent, and we're lucky to have him on the team. Take one more. You guys got uh, you've got, like, I think this is the first time in over a month that you have a day off. We got the day off? Yeah, you've got, you've got two days. Oh, it's lit. Is that, that true? Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Tuesday. I, I, do, I, I assume you feel pretty good about it. Yeah, man. I feel, I feel all right about it, man. I love being here. I love my job. There's no place I'd rather be than here. So I'm sad that I'm going to be away from my guys for tomorrow. But um, we'll reconvene uh, the next day. How do you feel about the back-to-back -back after those two days off? We got a back-to-back? -back? Yeah. yeah. That's the I got to start looking at the schedule. But, <laughs> but nah, uh, a game is a game, man. We'll be ready to play. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Welcome back. I've been here for eight seasons, right? <laughs> Welcome back, Edwin. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel good. You? I'm great. We're in a Carolina shirt. South Carolina. We beat them when I was there. I I remember. I remember the dunk that you had. Ooh. That shit was nice. It was actually a broken play. Actually, we ran the play wrong. Mm -hmm. I remember that. But it worked out. <laughs> oh, yeah.
<laughs> uh, 21 minutes for you tonight. I know Coach was talking about minutes restriction before. Uh, just how did you feel? Like, what was the kind of the decision making thought process coming back tonight, and, and how do you feel afterwards? The decision making process was that I was good to go. And we said that we were going to play. And that's what we did. We did a good job. Everybody played, except for DeAndre Jordan's old ass. Kind of say, great win. Did you feel pretty good the whole time physically? Do you feel of course. Like there's any ramp up process that? Well, I'm on a minute restriction, so yeah, but I feel good. Uh, 142 points. Like the team made a, a whole bunch of threes tonight. Just 38 assists. Yeah, 38 assists as well. Um, what was the ball was obviously moving out there really well. What was the break? Was it getting into the paint? Was it just rotating around the perimeter? No, we're just playing our game. This just uh, just comes down to defense. Um, Getting out and running as well gives us more opportunities to get those assists and points. So um, it wasn't we didn't we don't change anything when we score more or score less, bro. So we just played well and we played well for the whole game. KCP, oh sorry, hmm. KCP shooting around fifty percent from three the last twelve games or so. What's sort of working for him getting in a rhythm and how much do you guys sort of make sure to look for him when he's sort of in these rhythms? Um, nine for twelve. He's just, I mean, I don't know. he's shooting. He's shooting well. We're finding him. Um, he's shooting with confidence. He he had a little slump. I don't want to say slump, but he wasn't shooting the way he shoots um, for a couple games. And um, I think everybody in the world goes through that. I think he uh, he found it the last couple games, and he's just been shooting to a big basket ever since then. So. Um, I think that's a season high for him. Um, yeah, he's just being aggressive, you know. He took more shots than me tonight. Better, better highlights tonight. Justin Holiday's behind the back pass or Jay Huff's DHO? Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> Ooh, that's tough. I mean, Justin's because <sighs> no one really expected it. I expect Huff to dunk it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go with Holiday. Well, obviously, you've been out there for most of the recent games, but it feels like there have been really poor shooting nights and then really good shooting nights for the team. Do you feel like the, the quality of the looks has been consistent over over the last six or seven? I haven't played. I know, but watching from the bench. Yeah. I mean, we don't play any different. Like We don't. We try to play the same way. Even when Yoke is out, when I'm out, we just try to play the same game. Um, guys shoot with confidence. Some guys... Uh, I've been making shots, and some guys have been in a slump. Um, we know Michael Porter can shoot the ball. I'm not worried if he misses three in a row. Um, so CB, same thing. I want CB to shoot more, catching shoots, um, just being ready, you know, especially for playoffs. And Pwat, same thing. So I think everybody's just trying to find their shot, find their rhythm, um, not do too much. And um, yeah, just playing the flow. Weeks ago in the regular season, are you guys able to Kind of feel the playoffs coming, and get excited for that, and not feel like everything is like the season's so long. The rest of the way, is that kind of uh, this goes both ways because you want to develop good habits. So um, sometimes something might happen, and um, everybody was in the plus today. That's good. Um, sometimes you develop, you know, habits, or you try and do too much, or whatever it is. Um, I just think you know we got to stay sharp, you know, and not. Not get lazy, I say probably the best word. So, um, yeah, obviously the excitement's there and all that, but we want to, like I said, there's no more uh, no more leeway. You know what I'm saying? We got to go in the game and, and everybody play the right way and play in unison and um, everybody's trying to accomplish one goal. So um, it goes both ways. Yeah, we're excited, but we're also trying to stay on top of each other and, and stay disciplined. Do you know if you're going to, I would say not, but do you know if you're going to play in the back to back? I don't know. Why would I? I expect to play. Oh. Once the four games left, like you guys are currently in the one seed right now, just how much does that matter to you in any way, shape, or form? Like the home court advantage aspect of it. Of course, it matters. It's the number one seed. You get home court advantage the whole playoffs, even when you get to the finals. So, I think. Well, we don't because oh, Boston. Awesome. Yeah. So, but of course, it matters. Are there any particular habits that you're focused on in? individually in your game, do you get back in these I would say just less turnovers. I know I know I'm gonna turn it over and um, take risks and make plays, but 
um, just trying to control the game. You know, even today, I didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't really aggressive. I just, I just wanted to make sure everybody was in rhythm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm picking my spot, staying aggressive, shooting threes. I thought I shot more than four threes today. Did I? What do you think? Two for four? I mean, you guys are watching the game, bro. Tell me. It looks like you shot four. Yeah, long two. Long two? Okay. Yeah, long two. I made it. Up. I made it. Yeah, made it. I'll take it. One more. Anybody else? Katie, go ahead. I don't know what everybody's already asked. That's okay. What do you think of Jake Huff's dunk? I thought it was great. I thought Holiday's pass was better. Mm -hmm. Well, because the question was asked, y'all. So. Oh, dang it. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 <laughs>